TOS Television, your digital force for an African news network. I am Abigail Lukwande and this is Africa Now. Sudan's Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok has resigned after another day of mass protest against a recent deal he had done to share power with the army. In a televised address, Hamdok said he had tried his best to stop the country from sliding towards disaster, but that despite everything that has been done to reach a consensus, it has not happened. Hamdok's decision to quit leaves the army in full control. A significant coalition of political parties in Mali rejected the military-led government's five-year plan transition to democratic rule. Since August 2020, the military has carried out two coups and postponed elections. Under its plan, a constitutional referendum will be held in 2023 and legislative elections in 2025. A presidential elections would not take place until 2026. Now, extensive damage has been done to South Africa's parliament by a fire that started on Sunday, collapsing the roof and gutting an entire floor in one building. After several hours, firefighters partially contained the blaze that billowed from one of the several buildings that make up the parliament complex in the legislative capital, Cape Town. A man in his 50s has been arrested in connection with the blaze. The cause of the blaze is still not known. South African investigators next week will hand over their first report in a long-awaited probe into state corruption under former President Jacob Zuma, the government said Friday. Zuma, who is 79 years of age, is accused of enabling the plunder of state coffers during his nine years in office. The report is expected to be released to the public either the same day or on Wednesday. Six people have been killed following an attack by suspected al shabaab militants in coastal town in Kenya, Lamu County. According to police, the suspected militants also touched several houses in the Monday morning attack. The Al-Qaeda links group is seeking to overthrow the government that is internationally backed in Mogadishu and controls swaths of southern Somalia from where it regularly launches attacks in the capital and elsewhere. This is your Digital Force for African News Network, TOS Television. You're watching Africa Now. Business and more coming your way after the break. Do stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back in business. Ethiopia, Mali and Guinea were on Saturday cut off from accessing a duty-free trade program by the United States. Unconstitutional change in the government in both Guinea and Mali and the alleged gross violations of internationally recognized human rights being perpetrated by the government of Ethiopia and other parties amid the widening conflict in northern Ethiopia is responsible for determination, U.S. says. World-renowned paleoanthropologist Richard Leakey, known for his fossil finding and conservation work in his native Kenya against the ivory trade, has died at 77, Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta announced. Leakey, who was ground, whose groundbreaking discoveries helped prove that humanity evolved in Africa, remained energetic into his 70s, despite bouts of skin cancer, kidney and liver disease. One of the lowest rates of journalist death worldwide was recorded in 2021, with 45 killed, the International Federation of Journalists says. Looking at the tally regionally, Africa comes third place with eight killings. According to the Committee to Protect Journalists, the number of journalists behind bars reached a global high in 2021. CPJ says 293 reporters were imprisoned worldwide as of December 1. Algeria's President Abdel Majid Tabon on Sunday ordered the creation of a new authority to hold an inquiry on the enrichment of public officials through rigorous legal proceedings for the fight against corruption. During its meeting held on December 1, 2021, the government examined the draft bill on the organization, composition and functioning of the High Authority of Transparency, Prevention and Fight Against Corruption. And in sports. Senegal's football authorities are accusing English club Watford of refusing to release highly rated midfielder Ismail Assar for the African Cup of Nations that kicks off next Sunday and will be seeking FIFA's intervention. The Senegalese Football Federation statement comes amid an escalating rule over English clubs refusing or delaying African players' departure to take part in the tournament. And that is it on Africa Now. For more updates, do visit our website at www.tostvnetwork.com. Follow us and like our social media handles on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Remember to subscribe on YouTube to stay with us and enjoy more programs on TOS Television Network. I am Abigail Lopande. Thanks for watching.